Ophelia means daughter. We are the daughters of the women who came before us, and we fight so that our daughters may be free. We are a women-led volunteer organization. Our vision is a world free from patriarchy, where all women and girls are liberated. We seek to contribute to the women's liberation movement by building sisterhood and solidarity among women, locally, nationally, and globally. By amplifying the voices of women, particularly those less often heard or purposefully silenced, and by defending women's human rights. Hello, dear visitors, thank you for coming to the second part of the Philia webinar, Sex Trade Survivors Demanding the Global Change. I am Luba Fine from Philia. 13 exited survivors from 12 different countries are participating in this webinar. Now I will introduce our next speaker, Caroline Pugh Roberts. She was born in South Africa and survived sex trafficking in Canada. After exiting and recovering, she has decided to dedicate her life to the abolitionist struggle. She became an expert on human trafficking who works with multiple NGOs, projects, and educational institutions. Caroline traveled the world to deliver her message to a global audience. During this journey, she educated over 20,000 people. Caroline speaks about the harms of pornography as well. Recently, she sent a letter to the PM of Canada, Justin Trudeau, asking him to shut down MindGig, a parent company of the Pornhub. Thank you so much, Caroline. Two years Harry. ago, Caroline started a program. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you have also started a program for women who have been or are at risk of being trafficked. Since its inception, 19 women have permanently exited and eight more women are in the process of rehabilitation. Now, in addition to her activism, Caroline is also incredibly cool. She's a skydiving instructor <laughs> who held a Canadian record for seven years, yes, and got a silver medal from the Canadian Nationals. Thank you so much for joining us, Caroline. Let's listen to you. <laughs> Thanks, Luba. I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> I want to I want to start by following up something uh, the previous speaker just said. Why is it that the world has a problem with minors selling sex, but the minute she turns 18, she's choosing it? If she's known nothing else. So I also want to say that sex is not a human right. Food, water, air, safety, freedom, and education are human rights. Sex is not a need, it's a want. So in 20, December 2014 here in Canada, uh, the, our version of the Nordic model, equality model, was implemented, and I was lucky enough to be able to consult on that. Prior to that, 888 women were charged. After that, only five. So this is really important because the premise of Bill C-36 is to enable women to exit when they and if they so choose without a criminal record. You can't even be a volunteer if you have a criminal record. They get are forced to go back because they cannot get work. So it does not make it more dangerous, which is an argument I'm hearing all the time. After that, the HT, human trafficking charges, presented in three out of 10, and those charges were profiting off, off of somebody. Prior to the implementation of this, our model, there were 54 homicides that dropped to 35. So when people say it makes it more dangerous to decriminalize and criminalize the men, it's just not true, and we have the stats to prove it. That's actually on the contrary, right? So 93% of those charged under Bill C-36 were men. And this is why we have to target the men because it's basic economics. I know I'm singing to the choir. 
With no demand, there's no need for supply. It's very, very simple. Victims were less likely to have physical injuries with the implementation. In the five-year period after the implementation of it, only 17 required, uh, received injuries compared to 29% previously. Women were far more likely to come forward if harmed because they knew they wouldn't be charged. So it is making it safer for them. The pro-legalization, or actually I call them the pro-pimp lobby, is disseminating the information wrong and it's getting down to the streets where a lot of the women are and it's incorrect. Right now, our law is being challenged uh, as being unconstitutional by an organization called an organization, a pimp, a brothel called Fantasy World. And I personally worked, I work with, a, I got a hundred and eighty women on my case load. I'm working with one woman that was trafficked by them. It's outrageous what they did to her and they are finding the money to challenge it. So there are three coalitions being formed here in Canada. I'm a part of two of them. And we are applying for a status to intervene in the courts. Now, luckily I've managed to find all this data which squashes all their arguments. It doesn't make it more dangerous. If we look at the other countries that have implemented it, we know this too. We also know that when we look at the other countries where it's legal, organized crime has taken over. Now, people tell me, you can't legislate morality. Take morality, put it on the side. If and when you legalize, you're literally opening the doors of your communities and saying, welcome to organized crime. This to me is enough proof. So having said that, I have found that the primary people who advocate for the pro-pimp lo uh, pro lobby are men and women, usually university educated, who have never, do not, and will never sell their bodies advocating for you and your child to sell themselves. Dr. Melissa Farley has done the research, 95% of those in want out. Prostitution is also incredibly racist. People of color are singularly the highest amount of people being trafficked. In Canada, the indigenous peoples represent 4.8% of our total population, but represent over 50% of the trafficking victims. So people are saying prostitution, prostituted women is a viable career option. Let me tell you something, I was in it for eight years. Even within it, there is a hierarchy. Yes, I'm on the street. That's the worst I can be. The people who are strippers, escorts, well, I don't do that. So even those women know because they're still trying to make themselves appear better. And I get it. You have to justify it to survive it. I get that. So we've got this challenge happening. And like I said, again, luckily I found these stats. I've got documents now and I can, we can confidently go to court. I had a hard time finding this information, but I managed to. It costs our government in healthcare per victim in Canadian dollars, $802,902 per victim per year to look after them from the damage done to their bodies. And that includes the addiction counseling, that includes the um, physical, because we're looking at prolapsed anuses, we're looking at collapsed pelvic floors. I'm working with a woman, she's 18, she's permanently on a diaper. This is not a viable career option. So I also have co-run the John School for over 15 years, the Sex Buyers Accountability Program. And I found it to be profound. My number one job there is to humanize us to these men because we're commodities and that's what legalization does. I say to them, would you drop your mother, aunt, daughter, or niece off in a dark alley at three in the morning and drive away with Mary another thought to her? And to a man, they get offended and go, no. And I, I take a very pregnant pause and I go, well, why'd you do it to her? Dead silence. When I speak in universities, I actually quite like that because the boys slash men in those classes are at the age where they can have the financial means to purchase. And so we've got the empowering arguments. So I turn to the men in the class and I say, how many of you think that prostitution and pornography is empowering? And they raise their hands. Then I say, 
how many of you would marry her after that? Not a hand raises. And I turn to the woman in the class and I say, see, look around, look around. They are not on your side. This is about satisfying their needs. They don't care if they harm you and destroy any potential future that you may have had. So I get to, I'm hearing arguments. Prostitution enables women to put food on the table, to buy diapers for their children. I ask the men, so you care? And they go, yeah. And I go, well, why don't you just buy her the diapers? Why'd you make her earn it? I have, in over 15 years, always, without fail, had at least one guy come up to me, often with tears, saying, take me by the hand, which I didn't have a problem with. He didn't ask if he could touch me, but, and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know. At which point I say, you know, I get that we don't know what we don't know. And I get that when we know better, we do better. But what I don't get is why you didn't know. We women are roughly 50% of this planet, yet we gave birth to 100% of it. Why didn't you know? And this comes back to the education. We, I, I tell these men, it's time for you to stand up and be counted. Stand up and be counted. And yes, you're going to get pushed back, but it's nothing compared to what we've had since time beginning. Stand up and say no to your peers. Unless and until every one of these men speaks up for us in every scenario that they're in, it might as well be all, non -men, all men because any form of silence is complicity. People say to me, not all men. I give them this analogy. I'm walking down the street one night, it's pitch dark, there's a man following me and I'm very, very scared. And then I remember not all men. So all of a sudden I'm not scared. I need to know, literally not all men. <clears throat> I wanna talk about porn just for a moment. We know that pornography is still in prostitution. In Canada, we have Bill C-36, where it's illegal to purchase. Why are these men allowed to purchase porn? I'm struggling with this one because especially when these, and we know how so many women are trafficked into pornography. Even when they're dead, these men will still be masturbating to their rape. They're literally watching a crime scene and it's legal. I'm confused about this. We know that through the uh, campaign uh, for Pornhub, they had to remo remove 10 million non-consensual videos. I'm on Pornhub, I don't know where, and I've chosen not to look for it, but this is something when, I, when these women, myself included, walk down the street, I don't know how many men have seen me naked. And yeah, oh, it doesn't go away for us. It doesn't go away. Money doesn't buy consent, it buys compliance. And that's a big difference. I, I've got so much to say, I'm, I'm like tripping over my words. I wanna say again that sex is not a human right. And if the purchase of sex is illegal here, why can they purchase porn? Because that is purchasing sex. If their definition of sex is only by physical touch, then that needs to be in the thing, but it's not. So stop, porn needs to be illegal to purchase. It's very, very simple as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's what I've got prepared. I know I probably didn't go 20 minutes, but thank you. But well, thank you very much. And you are absolutely right. There is absolutely no reason to to uh, enforce the sex purchase ban into a low porn. Actually, yeah. fighting porn is so much easier than fighting the uh, traditional sex trade. You know, to, to shut down the brothel, you should uh, do some field work. To shut down uh, porn websites, you should, you, you should just uh, push, push the button. This is absolutely no reason to not extend the Nordic model yeah. on the porn and, the, and other kinds of prostitution, uh, porn and the strip clubs and the, the webcams, web uh, everything. Yeah, actually, and, going yeah. to what Valerie said, I've seen every conceivable sex act, including fisting in the strip bars. They are brothels. It's very simple. She's very right. And they do not get paid to work in strip bars. When you walk in there, you pay them the privilege for working. It's astonishing, absolutely astonishing how 
how degraded and the, the level of depravity that's involved in the selling of human beings, especially females. You are, a, you, you, this is so true. And uh, thank you very much, Caroline, for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you.